Pixar's Pete Docter is one of the studio's most imaginative directors. His knack for visualizing abstract concepts like Inside Out's Consciousness Headquarters, which was inspired by a combination of play school activity tables and a scene from a Woody Allen movie, has pushed the boundaries of animation to deepen the ways children and adults understand things like processing their emotions, their individual purpose, and the meaning of life. If you're gonna tell a story uh, to kids, I think, first of all, they are way smarter than maybe we would consider. They, they totally get all these complicated things if you make it visual. In his new film, Soul, Doctor might have found his most difficult design challenge yet. How to visualize the most elusive of human constructs, the soul. What the? And he and his Pixar team ultimately found inspiration in an unlikely place, NASA's spacecraft materials. Souls weren't the only metaphysical characters they needed to design. The universe's kindergarten teachers, the counselors, who are beings responsible for helping new souls find their personality and interests before heading to Earth, needed to look not like gods, but an expression of the universe itself. Doctor and Co. looked high and low for inspiration, but landed on something remarkably similar to a painting style made famous by Picasso in the early 1900s. So. If you're wondering what it took to turn Pete Doctor's early drawing of 22 into the adorable soul you see on screen, look no further, because we're going to explore how Pixar designed the ethereal characters of soul. Is this heaven? <laughs> no. In Soul, Doctor tells the story of Joe, a passionate jazz musician working as a band teacher in New York, but when an accident leads him into another realm, Joe joins up with an unborn soul, 22, and together they go on a journey to understand the nature of life's purpose. And while the film is certainly bound to raise some personal questions, the first one for Doctor and team was, what does a soul even look like? Like with most of our stuff, we started with research. So we talked to a lot of, uh, let's see, religious experts and people who study civilizations. You know, so understanding like from varying traditions, how do people represent the soul? Is there, are there any clues there? By and large, the answers were, well, people have throughout time have seen the soul as ethereal, non-physical, um, you know, vaporous. And so that was not entirely helpful, but a clue. They knew they had to put something on screen. And while it couldn't be non-physical in a strict sense, they had some ideas. How can we allude to the non-physical? And so we thought something kind of fuzzy or, or like a cloud would be great. From Pete Doctor's first drawing of 22, Pixar's designers looked into plenty of different concepts for a soul, including cloudy looking spectrums and black voids with colorful ghostly comet tails and trail but they eventually discovered this cloudy looking material called aerogel. Since over 90% of it is just air, it's the lightest solid material on Earth, but it's also so tough, NASA is testing it on its re-entry vehicles. Great. Now that the Pixar team had a real world material to visualize a soul's non-physical being with aerogel, their next step was to adapt it to work in their complex CGI animation systems. This isn't the first time Pixar has pushed the boundaries of what CGI animation is capable of. In Monsters Incorporated, they refined CGI's ability to render realistic hair. And in Finding Nemo, they pushed the bounds of what was possible with computer-generated water. Now, Pixar was pushing the bounds again with Soul. For Soul, we developed a whole different bunch of tools that we had never done before to be able to handle, especially light, because you have this kind of clump of fog and light comes in and it bounces around in very interesting ways that we also needed to control so you'd be able to see this character against other stuff, you know, and if you see through it too much, then you can't read the face. It took a lot of work and collaboration between animators and technicians at Pixar, but Pete Doctor and his team finally solved the eternal question. What are souls made out of? Aerogel, apparently. But the design work wasn't done. Regardless of what I might think a soul really looks like, the story is telling me I need to have identifiable human features like eyes and a mouth so that I can express the things I need to and have the characters interact. The soul team worked hard to keep things simple, using as little detail as possible. But what details they chose, they made count. <gasps> Don't worry, you can't crush a soul here. That's what life on Earth is for. 22 
one of the main characters has buck teeth and a cowlick to help distinguish her from the other new souls. And while main characters like 22 and Joe have their own unique features, the team at Pixar had detailed rules to tell all the different types of souls apart. Yeah, we thought, okay, souls who have not lived, they all look more or less the same. They have slight variations just so that they're not carbon copies, but they don't have um, any real distinguishing characteristics. Even to the point of like eye color, we made it purple so that it wouldn't be indicative of any race or ethnicity or anything. Of course, things change once a soul makes its way to Earth. So then once they go live, our thought was life changes you. It, it's the reason why souls go to Earth is to be shaped by life. And so their soul shape is going to be formed uh, in, in reflection of who they were on Earth. Joe has like a hat that he always wore on Earth. His head's a little longer. You know, we have some characters that have like a shawl. And again, some of this is a slight bit of cheating so we can tell who's who. Now that Doctor and the Pixar design team had figured out the shape of souls, they had to move on to what were probably the most difficult characters to design in the film, the counselors. This won't be a disaster. That's for sure. So we wanted them to make sure they didn't look like people, that they were not souls, they're something else. They're, they're the universe guiding these souls through the day. And we didn't want it, the audience to be confused in any way that this is a soul, that it's somehow a uh, human. We wanted it to be otherworldly and yet also not like, oh, it's an angel or it's God or anything like that. We wanted to steer away from that. The counselor's own description of themselves is described as the universe dumbing itself down for humans to be able to comprehend. And the artists at Pixar took inspiration from many sources, including Swedish sculpture, nature, and even light. Eventually, they landed on a character design that looks like it came right out of a Picasso painting. And that makes sense, considering Picasso's Cubist period started as an experiment to create a new way of seeing that tried to capture objects from multiple angles and reconstruct their multi-dimensional geometric forms within the limitations of their two-dimensional canvas. So this just seemed like a really intriguing way of saying, okay, I'm, I was imagining like there's all these points in the universe and multiple planes of existence and they're all kind of congealing and coming together and forming into this line. Where cubism attempted to simultaneously show multiple views of an object in one canvas, the counselors are an attempt to visualize visualize the infinite complexities of the universe in a single form, a living line. But it wasn't as simple as drawing a line and saying, this will work. And then um, one of the folks in the art department, Deanna, she just took some wire and bent it. And so it was two dimensional, but three dimensional at the same time. And so um, when she showed it in review, she took like a flashlight and shown this on the wall. Those 3D wire sculptures aren't flat, but by projecting its shadow on the wall, it allows these wire sculptures to simultaneously live in both 2D and 3D planes. The magic trick of this 2D, 3D line is what gives the counselors that ethereal motion. And the complexity of the counselors provided unique challenges to Souls animators because they couldn't be animated like traditional rigged 3D models. Instead, the artists explored the shapes, expressions, movements, and transitions of the line to give them an unworldly sense of movement. Oh, hey, look, I already know everything about Earth, and I don't want anything to do with it. You're missing out on the joys of life. A lot of work and creativity went into designing the characters of Soul. But in the process, Pete Doctor has managed to make a film that not only visualizes the very essence of our being by giving it a fedora or buck teeth, but also tells a compelling story that will help children and adults contemplate the relationship between the meaning of life and the inevitability of death. It's not easy, but I do feel like that is one of the real strengths of the animation medium. We don't cast our films, we create them. And so it's a real joy and I, I love doing it. For more on Disney, be sure to check out our playlist of all the trailers announced on Disney's Investor Day 2020.